Pressburger arithmetic provides the mathematical foundations for polyhedral composition, enabling powerful loop optimization techniques that accelerate deep learning and scientific computing. I'm Arjun, and I'll be presenting FPL, a new library for Pressburger arithmetic that attains high performance by optimizing for typical polyhedral workloads and is now directly available in MLIR. Pressburger arithmetic lays the foundations for powerful optimization techniques such as Poly's support for optimizing tensor contractions, Cerberus's work on using polyhedral tools to optimize for deep learning hardware, and tensor comprehensions, which explored polyhedral loop transformations for deep learning. Also, MLIR introduced the affine dialect, an SSA-based IR that explicitly represents affine loopness for polyhedral loop transformations. Except MLIR, all these previous works used the integer set library ISL to handle Pressburger operations. ISL is the current state-of-the-art Pressburger library, and its development even involved devising novel algorithms for operating on Pressburger sets. Both ISL and FPL have full support for Pressburger arithmetic. ISL performs all its computations using arbitrary precision scalar arithmetic, whereas FPL uses vectorized SIMD operations on machine integers to improve performance in the common case. ISL was developed as a standalone C project and benefited from the increased portability and compatibility that it has as a result of using C. For example, this allowed ISL to be used in GCC which was developed in C at the time. ISL was also used in LLVM as a part of Poly and in many other projects as well. FPL on the other hand is written in modern C++ and is deeply integrated into LLVM's MLI framework. We also use LLVM stack optimized data structures to improve performance. As a result of this integration into MLR, it's possible to move from the IR to the underlying mathematical objects in a very smooth flow. And we are currently in the process of upstreaming this work. Before we go into the details of the library, let's do a quick review of what Pressburger Arithmetic actually is. The basic building block in Pressburger Arithmetic is integer polyhedra. Integer polyhedra are sets of tuples of integers subject to linear constraints. In this example, we have a set of pairs of integers x, y subject to the four constraints 2x plus 2y greater equal to 1, 2x plus 2y less equal to 13, 3y less equal to x plus 9, and 10y greater equal to x. Pressburger arithmetic also supports what we call Pressburger sets, which are unions of integer polyhedra, which is to say, we support both ands and ors of constraints. We support the basic set operations like intersection, union, subtraction, and complement. We also support the operation of checking whether a set is empty and finding a point in the set if one exists. These are important in polyhedral compilation. Additionally, we also support the coalesce operation, which simplifies the internal representations of sets. The sets are represented internally not as a list of points, but as a list of constraints. So an integer polyhedron has a constraint matrix where every row is a constraint and every column is either a variable or the constant term. Similarly, unions of integer polyhedra are represented as a list of polyhedra. And we can see that in this representation, taking the union of two Pressburger sets essentially involves copying over the constraints from the input sets to the output set. We will see that many operations can be boiled down to copying constraints in this way. In order to start performance tuning the library, we generated a benchmark of Pressburger arithmetic as used in polyhedral compilation. We did this by running the poly, ppcg, and pluto polyhedral compilers on polybench and extracting the Pressburger operations that it performs. We extracted over a million test cases and observed some interesting characteristics of the sets that occur. For example, we found that the constraint coefficients are sparse. In fact, 90% of the coefficients are just zero, and in general the values are quite small, because we can see that 99% of the values are at most 512. Also, the dimensionality of the sets occurring in these cases is also quite small. In fact, 90% of these sets have a dimensionality at most 10. The combination of small values and low dimensionality means that in the common case, we can represent the rows of the constraint matrix as SIMD vectors. 
ISL by default always uses scalar arithmetic with arbitrary precision integers which can be quite slow. However, since we have seen that the values are typically small, this is not necessary in the common case. And in fact, ISL does have an optimization that we call element-wise transposition. In this optimization, each integer object can individually switch between being a 32-bit machine integer or an arbitrary precision integer. Initially, 32-bit integers are used with overflow checks, and if an overflow is detected, only then does ISL fall back to arbitrary precision arithmetic. This means that in the common case where values are small, ISL uses fast machine arithmetic, and only in the rare cases where overflow occurs does ISL use arbitrary precision arithmetic to preserve correctness. While this optimization does exploit the fact that we have small values, it inhibits vectorization because in this design each integer object is a C union of an integer type and an arbitrary precision integer that may hold dynamic memory. Therefore, in the common case of copying a row in a constraint matrix, it becomes necessary to loop through each element in the row and dispatch to the appropriate copy function. In FPL, we went for a library level transposition approach. In this design, the whole library is templated on the integer type to be used. And dispatching occurs at the level of set operations. For example, if we were to call a union operation, it would then dispatch to the appropriate templated instantiation of the library and thereafter there would be no further dispatches required. So in this example, suppose we are dispatched to the 16-bit version of the library, we would then know that all integers used here are 16-bit integers and therefore we can actually vectorize the constraint copy. Each templated instance of the library throws an overflow exception if one occurs. The dispatcher then catches this exception and retries the operation at a higher position. This continues until we reach arbitrary position arithmetic after which no overflows can occur. Now let's look at some of the algorithms and how to accelerate them. We've already seen that the union operation basically boils down to copying some constraints. Now let's look at intersect. Intersecting two integer polyhedra essentially just involves copying the constraints from both the inputs into the output. Because the intersection of two polyhedra is the set that satisfies the constraints of both. Now let's look at the complement operation. Here, for example, we have a set satisfying the constraints x greater equal to y, y less equal to 4, x less equal to 6, and y greater equal to 1. The output of the complement operation will have one integer polyhedron for each of these constraints corresponding to the set of points where this is the first constraint being violated. So in this case, the output would have the first integer polyhedron being the set of points where x is less than y, the next one where the, the set of points where x greater equal to y but y less greater than 4, and so on. Thus we partition the complement of the set into four pieces. Here again we can see that we simply have to copy some constraints from the inputs to the outputs and perhaps do some point edits. Finally, let's look at the emptiness check operation. Here we want to find out if there exists an integer point within the given set. It is easy to find out whether there exists rational points using linear programming and in fact we can obtain a bound of values that each variable can take. So in this case, we know that x can take rational values between 0 0.8 and 4. Since we are only cons concerned about integer values, we can simply try all the integer values of x in this range, namely 1, 2, 3, and 4, and find that there are no integer values of y corresponding to any of these x values. However, note that this algorithm might be very expensive if it turned out that the set is very long along the x direction. However, we can see that there is a direction along which the set is short, and if we had instead computed the possible range of values of y minus x, we would have found only one possible integer value, and we would immediately be done. In fact, there is a theorem that there is always such a thin direction if the set is empty. We use the generalized basis reduction algorithm to find such thin directions. We saw that the integer emptiness operation uses linear programming. We implement linear programming using the simplex algorithm, which can also be accelerated using transposition computing and vectorization.
The simplex algorithm can be seen as a sequence of pivot steps. Initially, we find a point satisfying all the constraints, and then we perform pivots which decrease the objective value while making sure that the point still satisfies all the constraints. We keep doing this until we can't anymore, which means that we have found the point minimizing the objective function. This was a geometric way of seeing the algorithm. However, in the implementation, a pivot step is just a series of row operations over a matrix. As a result, this can also be accelerated using vectorization. Now we come to the evaluation of 5PL. We evaluate our library by comparing it against ISL on the benchmark suite that we generated. Previously, we mentioned that the typical values occur in constraints are rather small. However, this does not necessarily mean that transposition is applicable to our domain. This is because the integers could blow up during the operation of pivots in the simplex algorithm. Therefore, it is necessary to see empirically what fraction of the runtime is spent in test cases that can actually be run using short integers. Fortunately, we found that transposition is actually quite applicable to this domain. In fact, ISL spends almost 95% of its runtime in test cases that FPL can run using only 16-bit integers and up to 32 columns in the matrix. And therefore, these test cases can be significantly accelerated by FPL using vectorization. Now we come to the speedups. ISL's element-wise transposition approach has a speedup of around 1.5x over ISL using its default configuration of arbitrary position arithmetic. On the other hand, FPL has a speed up of 5.4x over ISL using arbitrary position arithmetic and 3.6x over ISL with its element wise transposition optimization. We also tried running a version of FPL that uses fixed precision 16 bit integer arithmetic and no overflow checks. This version of FPL is only correct on the subset of test cases that can be run using 16 bit integer arithmetic and yet. On this subset of test cases, it still only has a speed up of 1.08x over FPL with full transposition, which supports all test cases. This indicates that the overhead of our transposition design is quite low. Also, we found that we have almost no speed up on the easy test cases that run in tens or hundreds of cycles, whereas we have a speed up of 4x to 6x or more on the longer running test cases that take thousands to millions of cycles. FPL is developed within the LLVM MLR framework and we are actively upstreaming our functionality. We have already upstreamed the functionality for intersection, emptiness checks, equality checks, subtraction, complements and unions. And we have already upstreamed the algorithms for simplex and generalized basis reduction. Divisions are already supported upstream, and we soon plan to add support for arbitrary existential quantification. Currently, the entire library upstream uses 64-bit integer arithmetic, which is the same as the other an analysis functionality in MLIR. Our transposition design uses exceptions and therefore cannot be upstreamed into LLVM. You will be interested to hear your suggestions on how we can implement transposition in LLVM. In conclusion, we saw FPL, which uses transposition computing and vectorization to accelerate Pressburger arithmetic on polyhedral workloads. We saw that transposition computing is highly applicable to polyhedral compilation and that we achieve a speedup of 5.4x over ISL in its default configuration. Thank you.